The sky was clear. The seagulls were chattering and a group of pelicans sat on the shore basking in the sun. Captain Christopher Newport stepped out of his rowboat onto the warm sands that would later be called Cape Henry. He turned to look at his anchored ships half a mile away and then back to the beachfront where the colonists were unloading supplies. This was it. It was the first English colony in North America, and while Christopher Newport didn't know it at the time, this colony would be the first of many that would transform into the global superpower of the United States. There is an argument to be made that American Protestantism was created the very moment English settlers touched shore and created the first permanent colony of Jamestown in modern-day Virginia. The Puritans and Anabaptists who fled Britain and came to colonies like Jamestown set the continent down an irreversible trajectory through history. American Protestantism and its many denominations have defined the United States' history, culture, and most importantly, morality. American ethics and morals have a direct tie to Christianity, which makes it unsurprising that when Christianity, specifically Protestantism, started to stagnate and even lose its majority hold on America during the 20th and 21st centuries, the moral compass of the whole nation began to not just change, but degenerate over time. Here we will be covering a historic summary of American Protestantism and its impact on American morality and ethics in every state. The first Protestant Christians to arrive in North America from Europe were members of three different groups the Puritans, the Anglicans, and the Reformists. Each of these groups were fundamental in defining American Protestantism, however the Puritans were specifically the most important because they would be the ones to set in stone what American ethics would be for the next 200 years. The Puritans were a group of Christians who fled England because of religious persecution by the Church of England. They first arrived in New England and then would spread throughout the rest of the northern colonies during the early 16th century. They had a strict set of practices and rules that would make them look like religious zealots by today's standards, however they had a belief that hard work made men and women morally good, which was the foundation of the Protestant work ethic. The Anglicans, on the other hand, were just Englishmen who were loyal to the Church of England. The Puritans saw them as little different from the vilified Catholics, only in that they praised the English king as the earthly voice of God instead of the Pope. The reformist Christians seemed to get along better with the Puritans, however most of them were either Dutch or German, so they were still seen as other. Over time, the differences between these groups faded as more people from Britain migrated to the colonies, then suddenly in the mid-1740s, the Great Awakening shot out like a bolt of lightning through the 13 colonies. More people were going to church than ever before, and they went with a new religious fervor. The first feelings of an American Christian identity and culture were born, but it wouldn't really become mainstream until the American Revolution kicked off in 1776. On September 3rd, 1783, the revolution ended and the United States of America were now independent. When the dust settled, American Protestantism was born from the ashes. Anglicans abandoned the Church of England and became Episcopalians. Puritans and Reformists had faded out of history as Baptists and Calvinists took the stage. And new denominations were being formed left and right. These new churches and denominations argued over who had religious rights in the nation for over a decade until Thomas Jefferson felt it necessary to enshrine a separation of church and state into the Constitution. This was groundbreaking. A state that was legally not allowed to interfere with religion was unheard of at the time and would define the U.S. for the next century. Around 40 years after the ratification of the Constitution, the Second Great Awakening took place, which spawned the Methodist Church, Adventism, and dozens of other denominations. It also led to the formation of Joseph Smith's Mormon Church, which was denounced by most Christians at the time for being heretical and against Christian doctrine. Even though American Protestantism had just been born, it was being transformed at a rapid pace through the 1800s. Despite this, actual Christian doctrine had never really changed outside of small groups such as Mormonism. This showed that despite being radically decentralized compared to Catholicism, American Protestantism still had cohesion and wasn't being mutated beyond belief like many intellectuals of the time speculated it might. By the end of the 1800s, the crazy splintering effect that had created hundreds of denominations had slowed down and American Protestants had created solidarity with one another. Christians at this time knew the importance of family and the importance of strong social structures outside of the government, American institutions, and big business. Men knew it was their job to take care of their wives and make money for the family by doing labor. Women knew it was their job to have children and maintain the house and land of their family. There were obviously still evil and depraved people scattered around, but what was considered to be good ethics was widely known and ultimately was taken for granted. At the center of it all was the Christian worldview that they either grew up with or adopted. Even though there were many people who were not as enthusiastic about religion as others, they still held to the same values. All this, however, would rapidly change. The clouds were forming, and the storm was coming. The first big change to the United States that sent American Protestantism down an unhealthy path was the progressive movement in the beginning of the 20th century. It had been over a hundred years since Thomas Jefferson put the separation of church and state into the Constitution. This status quo was figuratively covered in dust up until this point. 
Progressives got into important jobs in every state and soon the idea of what it meant to be a Christian was changing. Progressives started pushing propaganda that being a Christian was not actually about being a spiritual warrior and follower of Christ, but it was really about getting rid of the old ways and creating a new moral society absent of the crimes of the past. When education and industry became primary focuses of the government, the state started to fill many roles that churches and families had filled years before. It became more morally and ethically right to promote ideas of democracy and equality rather than ideas of family and the words of Jesus. This was, along with progressivism, a residual effect of the Third Great Awakening and the increasing blend of American Protestantism with egalitarianism. It should come as no surprise then that during the Third Great Awakening, women played a major role in promoting this egalitarian strain of Christian values. Progressives pushed for mass public schooling, various social movements like voting rights, and putting both men and women into factories. All of this rapidly changed the dynamic of life for most of America, and it was just the beginning. Corporations, intellectuals, and the government were starting to take the place of where Christianity had been and started replacing Christianity with their own creation. The repeal of prohibition, a policy which was aggressively campaigned for by Protestants and progressives alike, signaled that the morality and social structure of the United States was permanently changing. However, it wasn't the worst case scenario. Not yet. The government may have inserted itself into people's lives like a church would have, but family values and Christianity were still dominant in the nation. American Protestantism may have now had to share a room with secularism, but it was still the head of the house, and still made all the rules. Besides, America had just become one of the wealthiest nations in the world. How could things possibly get worse? World War II is over. Hitler is dead and the Japanese Empire is defeated. The 1950s and early 60s saw American Protestantism and American ethical standards see a small period of growth and short rejuvenation. People were comfortable with leaving their doors unlocked as they left their house. The idea of your neighbors being decent people were just assumed and the only real paranoia people felt was toward the threat of godless communism. This brief calm in the storm ended swiftly, however, as the late 60s and 70s came into full swing and almost an entire generation of Americans turned against the society of their parents and grandparents. The counterculture movement unfortunately took direct aim at Christianity and young people from this time became disillusioned with anything related to it. Also during this time, government, institutions, and corporations saw a massive growth in power and influence, which made the presence of secularism in the average person's life larger than ever before. Soon, local churches and Christian communities became part of the background. Once the 20th century came to a close, the very idea of being a Christian was seen as foolish, prudish, and backwards. Someone trying to argue a Christian worldview in a college classroom became laughable. The influence of American Protestantism had taken a nosedive and for the first time in history, it no longer represented more than 50% of the United States population. As before, the trend of American Protestantism correlated directly with the decline of national morality. Hollywood, corporate media, and other industries have established a new normal in America. Having casual sex, going to the nightclub, and doing hard drugs had become more normal than going to church and having a family for a large percentage of the country. The situation had become a nightmare scenario for American Protestantism. Secularism was now the head of the house and was making all the rules. The storm was dark and the winds were strong, there was nothing Christians could do but weather the storm and wait for a new opportunity to show itself. From the early 2000s to the current year 2022, the decline of American Protestantism has seemed to have slowed. At this point, the official number of self-proclaimed Protestants in the United States stands at a consistent 130 to 140 million people. However, this number is probably inflated. One thing to be noted is that this number, while staying the same over time, is not stagnant. Over 500,000 Muslims have converted to Evangelical Christianity since 2005, and over a million and a half Americans who are Protestant claim to have been raised Jewish. People that are leaving the faith are being replaced at a faster rate than they are leaving. This is a very recent trend that shows American Protestantism may be heading into another period of rest much like the 50s, but it's much too early to tell. And given that this growth is being drawn from conversions rather than high birth rates, a changing in the character of American Protestantism might also be expected. The ethics situation of American men and women are an all-time low, especially with younger generations. The internet has played a big part in this. On one hand, many Americans are becoming depraved beyond belief due to what they consume on the internet. On the other hand, new energy and enthusiasm is being brought to American Protestantism and a new generation of American Catholics who have now found solidarity with their Protestant brothers. There has been a lot of talk of a new Great Awakening among many Christian groups. If this is true, then the next few decades could see the first dramatic comeback of American Protestantism since the 1840s. This is, however, a best-case scenario. The most likely future is that American Protestantism and Christianity in general will witness continued decline, along with American living standards and morality. 
Looking at American history, it has become blatantly obvious that the health of American Protestantism is directly correlated with the health of American morality and ethics. Perhaps the state of American ethics and Christianity can be saved, but only time will tell. This has been Dean with the American Populist Union.